this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are going to review Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which was, I thought, very entertaining. We're going to give you first a quick spoiler-free overview and then dive into some interesting details. Uh, there's a lot of Easter eggs in that movie. And I think it's basically, that's the point of this, I think, of this genre. It's, like, it's an Easter egg generator, this whole theme of uh, the multiverse. Not a doubt. But what do you guys think about the movie overall? First, you know, right, as a film, yeah. it, 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 it's above the waterline, definitely. I enjoyed it. Um, I thought that there was much, much better Marvel films that have happened, you know, mm-hmm. that are that are hero specific. But I really do like Doctor Strange, and I like I like um, Benedict Cumberbatch. I, I love he's him awesome. in the role. He, he awesome. really becomes Doctor he's so Strange. Likeable. He's so yeah, yeah. He's so his charisma is so infectious. Um, but you know, there was there was things about this movie that I thought that they could have done better. Mm-hmm. As an example, I felt the movie was it, it was actually a little bit too complicated. There was there was a lot of jigs and jags in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, which means that, like, I was getting a little annoyed. You know, when you're watching a movie, like, what's going on? Did I, did I miss something? Like, I felt a little lost in a couple places. Um, and that might just be my attention span in my age. Um, and, and I think it might be a movie where you watch it a second time. And you're like, oh, okay, now yes, I, I think you're right. Yeah, you might have to see that see it a second time. But that said, it was done well. Mm-hmm. They did so many things right. Um, I thought the I thought that for the most part. It's it's in the B range, B plus range. Yeah. Um, I you know I guess my biggest thing was it just didn't hit me like the first Avengers movie mm. or oh, yeah. or an awesome Iron Man movie. It wasn't on that level. You know, and, and yeah. maybe we might not ever get there. You come again. out of the theater thinking that was enjoyable. Yeah, it was a good read. It's a solid solid Marvel movie. Right. Absolutely think. worth seeing. Right. Yes. Oh yeah. Just gotta see it. see it if you're a big Marvel fan. Definitely see it. Uh, in visual juggernaut. I mean, just visually, it's just it's so amazing. You will not, your eyes will not be bored at all. Yeah, uh, I just, I had it's a, a fun ride, and definitely go see it. Is what I would say. Yeah, and I think just just to mention that, yeah, obviously it's about the multiverse, and the multiverse genre of Marvel movies, I think, is a great plot device, great storytelling device. It opens up a lot of possibilities. As I said, it is an Easter egg generator, and I think that Marvel is being brilliant in how they're exploiting. Uh, the multiverse uh, plotline. Uh, we'll save the rest for the spoiler-laden version uh, of the review. But um, and I think uh, what I'm curious about is how long they're going to ride this, and how how, how long are, will they go into it? How long are they going to sustain the multiverse plot? Again, the thing is, like Doctor Strange is at the center of it, mm-hmm. and kind of at the core of it. Yeah. And it felt like they shot a lot of their wad in this movie. I'm curious how they're going to pull like what's that next? out. Yeah. Yeah. The Spider-Man movie that came before this, I thought was brilliant. Loved it. Because they used the multiverse, yeah. and it was very clever. Yeah. But in in the Doctor Strange movie, they used the multiverse in a different way. Mm-hmm. It, wasn't, it wasn't like as – to me, it, that's what it is. It wasn't as clever – as other instances of them, you like like the cartoon Spider Man in the multiverse. Remember that cartoon mm-hmm. one? That to me was absolutely brilliant as yeah. well. Oh god, that was good. Um, so that that was probably one of one of the things that kind of bummed me out was they didn't really they didn't do something with the multiverse this time that I thought was novel. Well, what what, what the Spider Man um, you know m- multiverse movie did was they tapped into our nostalgia for the earlier Spider Man movies so well. You know, when when the earlier versions of Spider Man made an appearance, it was exciting. I mean, it was like, yeah. you oh know, my god, yeah. And they didn't. And this movie doesn't do that. It, it this was more of a play off of the What If series, which I loved, by the way, and yeah. it was awesome. It's a series of cartoons in other multiverse, in other mm-hmm. universes, and it's like, what if things went differently? And let's explore that. Works very, very well. And we were basically. Um, you know, treated to a bunch of what if scenarios in, in Doctor Strange, but there wasn't anything like, oh, cool, they're bringing this in from yeah. this other version of a, the, the Marvel, you know, re- reboot that whatever, you know, it's it's actually it's a part of another universe. It's not just something that didn't actually happen. Um, hmm. So they, they they yeah they that was missing 
from it. But not that you need that in every movie. And uh, I, you know, Doctor Strange doesn't have the legacy that Spider-Man has, right? So they really yeah. didn't have the catalog to draw from with Doctor Strange. But um, so I think they did the best they can. Yeah, and it worked. And it worked. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, so now let's let's click over to spoiler alert. We're going to now reveal you know plot elements. So this is for people who have already seen Doctor Strange or who people don't care about spoilers. Um, so I agree that the plot was a little complicated. I didn't have a problem following it, but it when it's not just a matter of following it. Sometimes when the, when the plot gets a little bit too convoluted, it kind of smears out your emotional response to what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what was the big, you know, climax at the end? You know, like it didn't really. It didn't have that. Didn't have that punch. Um, and also, I felt like they, you know, I, 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 when I said like the spoiler-free part of the review, it seems like they kind of resolved everything, and so threat was over. First of all, I'm, you know, I know we've said this before. The whole multiverse is at risk thing is getting kind of tired. We, as we, a we talk about this all the time because it keeps coming. Yeah, up. Yeah, they got to stop they threatening, coming up. killing everybody. You know, like I, I liked the Crimson Witch. Yeah, I thought it was interesting to have her become corrupted. Yes. Um, I feel like a great villain. It's good. It's really nice to turn a, a hero into a villain. And I think just like we learned from the boys, you know, there can be a very fine line between a superhero and a super villain. Sure. Villain. Very fine line. And I think the, the Crimson Witch showed that. But they did, they did something interesting and, and, uh, and ballsy, right? They, they said, okay, we're going to take her and mm -hmm. we're going to, she's going to become corrupted. And then we're going to show you that she's trapped inside this corruption and she mm. died anyway. They didn't. We didn't get the typical. Yeah. Oh, they saved her, and everything kind of clicks back to normal. Like she lost her life. Probably. I mean, some, there's some theories out there that if you, when you saw the building collapse, it was a some flash of red. That was that, she, to me. That was her exploding. You know? Probably, probably. But I mean, uh, they, you know, I wouldn't say it's impossible. Well, of course, they, they didn't bring her back. They and bring make her excuse, back. But, it, but yeah, the movie but that, implies that she died. No, right, just and, judging it for that. Right, and that gives a level of poignancy that you mm -hmm. can't. Sometimes you just can't take back a death because the death is what makes it, you know, so yeah. so important and emotional and, and poignant. Um, well, that's one of those, but, you know, taking back a death is one of those overused plot lines yeah. in the super, superhero right. genre. Um, because, again, it, it softens the, pl the plot impact of killing a major character. Yeah. We have to know they're really dead. If we're thinking, oh, well, there's a 50-50 chance of bringing this character back because yeah. that's what happens. It's lame. It, it, so it, takes, it takes all the drama and all the emotion away from it. It's got to be real. You know, the but, Stakes yeah. have got to be real too. I liked how it, she wasn't a conventional supervillain. I mean, mm -hmm. she she wanted her kids. Yes, yeah. Yeah. This her was motivation. this was a mom who wanted her kids, and that just it brought it to a different level but, in in my mind, and it made her very sad. You know, very yeah. sad as well. But it also brought up a, you know an unusual plot hole because where did those kids come from? Yeah. Right. I mean, that was one of the one of the bigger plot holes she because the kids created that we, them well, from her own imagination. Well, we know that she created her kids in the hex, right? In in the series, and mm -hmm. they were kind of like just projections from her mind but what about all the other kids in the other multiverses where did they come from There's, they don't give you any hint yeah. of, where, of where they came were they visions kid well not really he's not even biological um they just didn't really tell us was they her didn't, didn't even care to tell us where they could have potentially come from her imagination of her kids come from real kids in the other well universe. she just could have dreamt about no, them no remember they said that. that the dreams are actually other lives yeah, other, in the, in other the other multiverse universe, yeah so i thought was that, was, that to me was provocative, but immediately I was able to dissect that and find out how silly that concept was. Well, they'd have to develop that idea a little bit more. Yeah, everybody yeah. in the real world has dreams, and a lot of times we have like these weird – our dreams are typically weird. Yeah. And they're typically like frustrating or they're pull, they're plucking out something that, that's, you know, like, you know, I'm in high school and I don't have pants on. Yeah, you know, like right. That type of thing. Is that actually yeah. happening? <laughs> so there's, a, there's a universe where nobody's wearing pants in yeah, high school. It's, it's not multiverse weird, though. Uh, yeah. not, not in an entertaining way, right. anyway. But to circle back with what you said about her motivation as a villain, it was very good writing, I thought, to have her villainy come from her desire yeah. to have children. I mean – you know, think about that. Like, that's pretty damn cool. Like, that gives her a whole motivation that, that allows us to, like, fear her and not like her, but also feel bad for her. Yeah, the best villains have relatable motivations. Yes. If their motivation is, I'm evil, you know, that's not a relatable character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other, the other, the one thing about the multiverse that I, is troubling to me is, like, 
you know, we're not talking about there are 20 realms. Like we're talking about infinite. there's an infinite number of universes to slip through and accidentally find yourself in. Like yeah. it's too it's too big of a pool to swim in for them to get so lucky that they keep, you know, finding themselves in like, you know, semi-normal situations, like a universe that, you know, oh, it's you know, New York City, but it's a little different. There's white trees everywhere. You know, it would be like the melting wax or the paint universe or the, <laughs> you know if you think about the fact that it's infi infinite right the the what the universes that we could mentally even understand would be very small compared to infinity right but there but there would be an infinite of universes that we could understand even if there's an infinite number that we can't understand yeah, when you're talking about infinity i guess you're right it's it's right. it's hard it's types of infinity but I, they, I do think they need to think very carefully about how they're going to do the multiverse. So there's a number of ways that you could approach it. One way is that you're having plot about the fact that there's a multiverse, right? And that's what the Doctor Strange, uh, his re, his intersection with the multiverse is, right? He is, you know, at the center of the multi universe, the multiverse plot itself, mm -hmm. and that's why it's like, oh yeah, this is like puts the whole multiverse at risk. Um, which again, you know, I hope they don't do that again. They did it. Please don't do that again. The other way to do it is like you could have a Marvel movie in the multiverse genre that is in one universe. Yeah, it's just not this one, and and we and things are different, and things are different, and we care about the people in that universe and what happens to that universe, and anything could happen to that universe no because it ju will just click over to a different universe for the next movie and it doesn't ruin the, the, true, the, the genre. True, but overall, when you take all the movies, like yeah. let's say they made a whole bunch of movies like these what-if movies, it still detunes the sting of, of someone dying. I agree. So that's the, right. that's the challenge is why do we care about the universe number, whatever, in an infinite number of universes? We all become Rick, Rick uh, Sanchez where the, we don't care about anything, right? But nothing matters. That's why I love Spider-Man because they brought back – they brought three different Spider-Men. Yes, we already care about. Yes. That was that was yeah, doing it, was it at its in. best. That was the, the yes. perfect use of the multiverse yeah. because you care uh, about everybody. Because but we only have so much of that. Yeah. So we have so the other thing to do is sort of something in the middle where we're not talking about something that has ramifications for every single universe or just one random universe that we don't already have a connection to. It it has a connection to the the prime universe, the one that we've you know been experiencing in the in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What they say it was six. What was the number that was delineated for, for our know. universe? Remember one of the they six, numbered sixteen them. or something. Yeah, or like, one of them, one one of them was that low. 16, yeah, it was six. low. I don't know who remembers. Well, you know. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I would think it maybe it was ten to the six hundred sixty. <laughs> but um, one quintillion. The. Uh, but you know, but our universe is still sort of the focal point, but it's interacting with a very limited number of universes. Or perhaps, as you say, Jay, while there might be an infinite number of universes, there might be a very limited set that we can that we're touching or we're interacting with or that yeah. matter to us. And those are the ones that are very similar to us. The, right. the ones that are vastly different are much harder to get to right. or impossible to get to. What right. did you guys think of the the character of the young girl, America, uh, yeah, America, America, who could Chavez, yeah, who could jump. What yeah, did you think of the whole idea? her character was fine. You know, it wasn't like a memorable or gripping character, but she was fine, and you know, you sort of cared about what happened to her. And I like that. You know, it's okay, sure. So she has some kind of inherent ability to go from cross over from one to the other, and that made her the focal point yeah. of of the plot line, which is fine. That was a good. That was a reasonable plot device. So I I, I liked the ideas. But I didn't really care for the character. Like I don't feel like they made her character as she is written wasn't provocative. Yeah. If I she died, it would not have ripped my heart out. No. And, and that's it, what you should feel yes. when a major character dies. Yeah, they didn't get yeah. there for some reason. I don't know why. Like you just It's a you know, it's it's inevitable, right? It's a combination of things. All right, there's another angle yeah. to appreciate this movie. Now the director, Sam Raimi. Evil Dead, hello, Evil yeah. Dead series. He also kind of started the modern superhero movies, didn't he, with, with his early Spider-Man movies, mm -hmm. right? That was pretty much the beginning. Or Batman. Well, no, it's not well. It depends, Batman. Yeah, I guess, I guess. <laughs> but uh, 
Okay, but he was. Well, then we was, can even go back to the early Superman. You know, the 1980s. No, I, I wouldn't count that as like the modern superhero movies. But all right, so Sam Raimi. So, but Evil Dead, that that influence, you could kind of see that influence. Sure. And this was absolutely the undead like, Doctor Strange. The undead Doctor awesome. Strange was epic. One and of the was, best parts of the th movie. This was yeah. like one of the the goriest and 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 creepy kind of. Marvel movies that has, I think mm -hmm. has ever been made. Yeah, yeah. And I love that angle. Absolutely love it. When I saw like zombie undead strange, I was like, oh my God, look how, I mean, look how decayed he was. It was kind of explicit. And I love that. More that, I would love yeah. to have that. I agree. It was in very, more movies. It was like, very like adult, this. which I liked. It, yes. it wasn't, it wasn't leaning towards kids. It wasn't the Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo kind of crap. It was for adults. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, and I did love that too. And it's those moments that you crave, right? You want like, it, I forgot about the dead Doctor Strange body. Yeah, right. They just planted it as like literally yeah, planted yeah. It like a seed. That's yeah. right. And then they drew on it later, and I'm and it, that's always good. It right. made perfect sense. Yeah. So and, and and for some reason, I thought that his acting was a lot of fun too. Like watching him <laughs> kind of walk like a zombie and like mm -hmm. force that body to do what he yeah, needed yeah. to do was interesting. It was just yeah. and the it spirits and stuff. It was uh, the spirits. Nice, the spirits were cool. Nice creep factor. Yeah, Loved it. definitely. And they, they, you know, they did, of course, the Easter eggs that I referred to, and this is like the strength, I think, of the multiverse plotline sure. is that, you know, we have the council with, you know, with Professor X, you know, and with yeah, that was Agent great. Carter Xavier, from yeah. the alternate, yeah, the, the the Xavier that we know, I suppose, and and then Agent Carter from the What If series where she's Captain, the ver her version of Captain America. Uh, yeah, all that was cool. All that's cool. Right. It's cool. That's and even, cool. And even that brings up a little of an anomaly because the they said what the Illuminati, what they the Illuminati they were called. Yeah, they uh, they they brought Strange, you know, and say we, you know, you're we got to. We got to, we got to, you know, we got to hold you to task. We got to hold your feet to the fire for what you have done. And it was mainly because their version of Doctor Strange mm -hmm. was a scumbag. Okay, so, so, but why wasn't Wanda on their radar? She was the one that was the yeah. real threat. If she was on their radar, then maybe all of them wouldn't have died. You right. know, I was like, <laughs> come on, guys, he's not the real threat here, isn't it? Obvious that it's Wanda. Yeah, I mean, I also, when I watched her decimate that crew, I was a little like, really. Is she, is she this really? is Wanda, man. This is Wanda. I know, I know she's crazy powerful, but she she stripped through them pretty damn quickly. Yeah. You know, you would think that, you know, like I could see Reed Richards taking a dirt nap quick because, mm -hmm. you know, he just he can stretch his body, but he's not, you know, yeah. like Captain Marvel. You know yeah. what I mean? Captain Marvel, man, like has insane level yeah. of power. Yeah. yeah. So that to me, I'm like, well, is this Captain Marvel from another universe? And this is the multiverse, the part of the multiverse I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> I can't draw on previous movies because I always have to go, well, what is this Captain Marvel? Yeah. What is this particular Reed Richards? I don't really know them yet at all. Like I'm just kind of they're What they're doing is they're writing those characters in. It's fun. It's interesting. But an intelligent person watching this movie has to say, I don't know anything about the superheroes in this world, right? Mm -hmm. Just by the little bit of information we get from the dialogue that's happening, but we don't have their background. Like, I know a lot about all the real characters in, in Prime Universe. So yeah. that, I felt a little cheated, in a sense, during that fight, because I, I was thinking about that fight, and I'm like, man, she ripped through them like a chainsaw. Like, it was nothing. And then I'm like, ah, but I can't trust my historical understanding of those characters because I'm in a multiverse. So I don't know really anything yeah. about those characters. Yeah, but I think it's safe to assume that their powers are going to be significantly similar to what you know. And they're not going to pull out anything dramatic. You're not going to see Reed Richards have the power of, of Miss Marvel. That's true. Right? But if we do that then, then they made a mistake. Because Miss Marvel, Marvel should not have gotten killed that fast. Miss Marvel? Well, it wasn't Captain Marvel. Yeah. Right? Is that what her name was? I don't. I don't it was remember. Captain Marvel. Was it Captain Marvel? Okay, Captain Marvel in the alternate universe should not have gotten squashed like that. In my mm. opinion, I could be wrong. Yeah. Other people might disagree, but you know, I expect Cap Captain Marvel to last a very long time and do massive amounts of damage. Mm. So, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, again, it gets to like, what do they want these multiverse movies to be, right? And I don't know, I don't think they hit the sweet spot with Doctor Strange. Although I know that Doctor Strange because he has a unique relationship to the multiverse because he's Doctor Strange. But the first Doctor Strange movie was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. They have done well with Doctor Strange. Oh, no, the character. I love the character. Yeah. And again, this is a B movie. I mean, B plus, B, you know, B yeah. minus to B plus movie, right? It's good. 
It's good. It just wasn't awesome. I'm saying, what? How are they going to make these movies awesome? Yeah, because we're talking about it's a double-edged sword. The multi-universe, the multiverse plot line is a double-edged sword. It, it lowers the stakes. It makes us not care necessarily, or not necessarily relate, or be able to think within these all the universes. And they have to make it, you know, it, by almost by definition, it it makes the plot bigger because we're dealing with the multiverse. But they have to keep it small somehow. I have the answer. And then there's a, there's a sweet spot in there. I think they hit it with the Spider Man. I don't think they hit it with this movie. I think I have the answer. Yeah, I think the answer is that you can't have the multiverse smacking you in the face for two and a half hours. Yeah, it's too much. It's too because that's probably the part that I now that I think about it, I think that might be the part that did too like, much travel. It was too big. It becomes too onerous. It's too complicated. Numbing. There's too much weight. There's too many variables. Like again, I say this almost every episode. I want a story about people. I want yeah, yeah, you can yeah. bring this way down. You, can, you don't need I agree. to make the reach be that far. Mm-hmm. And and it's I do think again one of the strengths is you get to explore alternate relationships with people. What if these guys were friends in another universe for some reason? Yeah. And they did that in the what if? Yes. You know, the yes. what if uh, you know versions, and that was great. You know, when you have oh look, uh, the um, the Black Panther talked you know Thanos out of destroying the the universe. Yeah. Okay, now they're friends, and that's that's interesting to explore other possibilities like that. Those but it's, what at ifs. That, it's at that really tiny level, though. Yeah, those what ifs were, were they were almost they were invariably awesome. Yeah, they, great. I mean, yeah. the, the, how about the zombies? I mean, what a great if they took some of those what if episodes that mm-hmm. we saw and turned them into a live action like anthology, I would have ate that up because some they were mostly fantastic, off the hook mm-hmm. stuff. I that I loved. It was such a creative take on a on a, on a Good what if. Yeah. It was just a great what if examples. I mean So I think just think, to, to wrap this up. That, that to wrap this up, I think you know, Marvel has a tiger by the tail here with the movie right, right. plotline. It's a lot of potential, it's a lot of energy. The storytelling possibilities are incredible, but it could get out of control really fast. Yeah. And again, yeah. Spider Man, the Spider Man movie used it for I think they hit the sweet spot with that movie. Yeah. I agree. But it, Doctor Strange is 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 ripping through <laughs> all these realities and, and it gets it gets it's a little too much. It's the multiverse of I know, I know, I know, but like I don't you know what it is? My sanity is already on a thread. <laughs> yeah. What my the content that I that I consume, it can't strip away a little bit more of my sanity. It needs to be grounding. Yeah. But Cumberbatch did great. He's awesome. He's his awesome. his right his interpretation of this character is about as good as it can be. And I like how they really lean into the fact that Doctor Strange is an asshole. Yeah. And yeah. like the version that we know is the least asshole. But he's Doctor still an Strange. asshole. Yeah. He's still kind oh of my a, God. Kind of right, an ass, right. But he's actually the least ass of all the Doctor Strange. He's got a conscience. He's got a conscience. Yeah. He's, he is. <laughs> He's in a novel. No, he's one but, click away from being a villain. He really is. Like, actually, he actually is less of an asshole now than he was when he was a doctor. Yeah. He was a real asshole when he was a doctor. Like, becoming Doctor Strange actually humbled him yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. I like that he's got a little hard edge to him. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's not like a, he's not the kind of guy that gives you a hug and I'll mm. see you soon, friend. Like, you know, like, Captain America is a good guy in every single instance. In every way you see him, yeah. But, but like even you could think that um, Iron Man, Iron Man's one click away from being a, a villain too. Oh, yeah, right. See, in a lot of in a lot of universes, he could be an absolutely easily, a villain. easily, easily. That you know, that's something that could be explored. You just made me think of something. Though. Why? Yeah, would he do it? He wouldn't do it. Iron Man's dead, but not in every universe. Not in every I would universe. Love to see, I would love to see another Iron Man movie. Yeah. That would be awesome. Ooh. Imagine bringing him in, like you know. Anything that's anything uh, could happen. Uh, I know, right? You know, he won't do it. All right, he's done. All right, so first thing, go see the movie. Second thing, thank you so much for watching Alpha Quadrant 6. We love making this show. Um, we will, we, we want to make a show every week. Yeah. We are, we're very much hitting that. We've only, you know, we had a couple we're pretty of... pretty close. We're, we're getting, getting there. there. We're getting there. We're, 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 we're damn consistent. There'll be little breaches here and there. Yeah. But we just want you to know that we appreciate it. If you enjoy this show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Alpha Quadrant and the number six, or you can go to our website, Alpha Quadrant and number six.com. And pre order our book, The Skeptic's Guide to the Future. Bob, Steve, and I wrote this book. Steve is the lead author. Uh, Bob and I did, you know, well over a year of research. Um, and we were feeding Steve our research. Steve also, he did a ton of research yeah. as well, of course. Um, 
But we, we had a, a wonderful time writing this book. And if you enjoy, if you enjoy science fiction and how science fiction intersects with real science, this book is for you. All right, until next time. We'll see you next week, guys. Thank you.